And we're back. In today's conversation, we use a concept from the Hanukkah story to help us think differently about New Year's resolutions. Instead of resolving to change, we're thinking about the idea of rededicating ourselves to what matters. You're listening to the Joyous Justice Podcast, a weekly show hosted by April Baskin with Tracy Guy Decker. In a complex world in which systemic oppression conditions us to deny others and our own humanity, let's dedicate ourselves to the pursuit and embodiment of wholeness, love, and thriving in the world and in our own lives. It's time to heal and flourish our way to a more joyously just future. Hi, Tracy. Hey there, April. Happy Hanukkah. I wonder- Thank you. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, hi, person listening in. It's good to be here with you. It's good to be back after our first break in our two year plus streak of producing and publishing podcasts. Yeah. It was well deserved. And I'm still feeling a bit tired. So I'm excited to be mindful and prioritize my uh, restoration and rest. I'm trying to, re, you know, what's the word? Is it rejuvenation or getting back into balance? I feel like I made steady progress. I feel like I added up in the bank, but there's still a bit of a deficit. So, mm-hmm. but that's not a little bit of a downer. And I wanted to talk about things that I'm excited about. <laughs> <laughs> And why I want to feel so rested and energized, which is that one, this is a season of lights and holidays and connections across not all, but a number of different traditions. It's cold time for many people in the world. In Senegal, it's still hot, but the air conditioner isn't on, which is, uh, you know, it's almost at the level my partner would call cold and I would just call it not hot. It's not even chilly. It's just not hot. <laughs> it's like room temp. My son's like, it's freezing. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we just, um, I'm getting centered here and I welcome our listener and you too, Tracy, to do the same. Uh, we are on the other side of our first live workshop. That was really incredible. <laughs> it really um, was. Yeah, it was so special. We got to connect with new and old friends, longtime friends and acquaintances, and got to have really powerful conversations. And um, I'm excited to do this more over the course of the next year with you, Tracy. I feel like we just, we both had this incredible experience and we just touched the surface of the kinds of conversations and interactions we can have and relationships we can establish and lessons that we can collectively learn that we can teach and also that we can learn from the people who are co-creating this experience with us. Do you have any reflections that you want to refract back? It was, it was really powerful for, for me to see folks, um, both folks for whom it was brand new and also folks who have heard it before, really like hear the lessons and, and immediately see how what we were sharing could help them uh, in their lives. That was really, really gratifying. Yeah. So, Tracy, you had an idea of a a Hanukkah-inspired theme that I think is really wonderful and also super relevant for loads of people. And it's also kind of inherently, which doesn't have to be, but it also is kind of inherently intercultural because it's a sort of a dialogue between some of the insights from our Jewish holiday and how we can use that to be in mindful conversation with societal patterns and trends around the Gregorian, the approaching Gregorian New Year. Yeah. Thanks for that introduction, April. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so I've been thinking about Hanukkah um, and the, we, we often talk about the symbolism of the light, which we also have some ideas about, which I don't know if we'll get into today or in a future episode, but, mm-hmm. but the light is um, very obvious and, and frequent kind of 
symbol that people uh, talk about appropriately so. And there's another concept um, built into the Hanukkah story that I've been thinking about, um, as you alluded to, um, in regards to the new year. And and that's the idea of rededication, because that's ultimately what the Maccabees were looking to, to do and did with that oil that miraculously lasted longer than they thought it would, was that they rededicated the temple. And so I'm thinking about rededication as a foil or as an alternative to a new year's resolution. And ooh. <laughs> what I like about it is that as we were discussing before we hit record, there's something that is just inherently appreciative in the idea of a rededication. Uh, so as opposed to a resolution where I'm like, where someone, not me, might say like, all these things are wrong with me, that are, are wrong with my life or are wrong with the way that I show up and I'm going to fix them. That's my resolution is to fix these things. To talk about a rededication is sort of acknowledging that you care about whatever it is and you're going to uh, sort of dive in in a different way. I just had an idea. Do you mind if I jump in for a Please second? Do. Mm-hmm. As you were talking, there's something about, there's a, a, a little bit of like a, a dynamic I see between how you just described revol- resolutions, revolutions. I also would love a loving revolution, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the resolutions versus rededication is that when you were talking about rededication, the essence or the spirit of it that came through for me was a ra- is was that it's much more relational is that there's appreciation, but there's also um, connection. There's there's a sense of interconnectedness, whereas like resolution to me doesn't inherently mean that it's transactional or that it's devoid of relationship, but nothing about resolution implies any sort of relationship or connection. It is more transactional. Like this, I this thing needs to get done. And so there's mm-hmm. like separate questions down that path of, of if we're doing something that is devoid of connection, then is it really, a, is it the best thing for us if it isn't actually, if there isn't a conversation or a dialogue or connective tissue between us and this resolution as opposed to rededication that might be connected to us or to other things that matter to us. I just wanted to yeah. add in that little layer. No, I think that's a, a lovely layer. I mean, especially from the story, it was a rededication of the temple, which was the, the place in which God could be among us. And even if that doesn't work for, I mean, if that works, that works for me. If that doesn't work for someone listening, I still think it's powerful because it a rededication is, even within the story, it's a return to what, what was true, a return to what is true and pure about oneself, potentially, if you're rededicating to something rededicating yourself to something that you care about and it feels like it feels to me as a way to set oneself up for success like the difference between a goal and intention the difference between saying I'm going to work out three days a week in 2023 and saying I'm going to rededicate myself to my health or to my um my body's well-being, or even to being the kind of person, um, you know, a la James Clear, uh, being the kind of person who works out regularly. That's a James Clear frame. He's a, he's a guy who writes about habits. He started in fitness. Uh, But even, even that feels like the intention versus that goal of three days a week. I know for me, when I fall down on that goal, if I set it as a goal, if I if I miss it for whatever reason, it's a lot harder than for me to come back. Like the streak feels really important and the goal. Whereas with the intention, especially if I'm thinking about my well-being, sometimes working out is not the right thing for my body. Sometimes resting is the right thing. And so that that more positive uh, rededication just feels like it sets me up so that I'm not then beating myself up when circumstances make it harder and it makes it easier for me to get back in. A couple more pieces that I'm thinking to add here. Thank you, Tracy, is that like rededication sense, there's a sense of history with rededication. 
I and, and there's also a sense of that there's something worth fighting for. There's like much yeah. more of a why, right? That there was dedication and now we want to re, that, that there was connection and whether or not the actual dedication was there or not, but there's a sense of there is something here that is sacred and important. And I am obviously, but also this thing that I'm working toward isn't just a shallow thing written on a page or some, it's not, it's, it's anchored in purpose and meaning. It. Yep. I love it. You know, it also, you mentioned this before we started here, before we hit record about my, um, my insight about Cheshbon Hanefesh, the accounting of the soul and thinking about accounting in the actual, you know, English sense of the mm-hmm. word that we need both sides of the ledger. Um, rededication feels like that as well, right? Mm-hmm. So whereas a resolution is all about the deficit or tends to be anyway, it tends to be about the deficit that you're seeing in the past. Uh, rededication actually, even in the word, holds both sides of the ledger because you're saying something needs to be, needs attention. So there's some sort of deficit, but but there is something good there that, that is being rededicated or, or added to. Um, Built upon, yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, there's that history that you just mentioned. I think that history speaks to the fact that there are two sides of a ledger uh, when, when we're considering whatever this intention might be. I kind of like that. Especially since a hashbon ha-nefesh and a resolution like feel uh, related. Um, and so that it, it, makes, it makes sense to me. It just sort of dovetails neatly. And now my mind is going like massively meta and we can return back to the path you were on in a second if it's okay. But as you're talking, it makes me think about how this is an interesting reframe for say like the US mm. Um, mm. and about like goals or resolution versus rededication. And and I didn't go to, to immediately to the US. I went to like for people that this is something that I've learned over the years of doing powerful social change work is that in certain ways people need to either return to old stories or develop new stories that explain their why. So like if someone say is a white person who was raised in a mostly racist context, it's helpful for them to identify white abolitionists either within their family or in their region or just in the country or people or some sort of history and relationship with other folks who were, who can help them contextualize themselves in a, a lineage that that can support them in that work. And it just had me thinking about, and then my mind jumped to the United States. The folks are hanging in with, with hanging in with me with this. Um, around it's just like a subtle shift, but I like that to think about rededicating and which essentially goes back to like to me that from my perspective goes back to like land back and it's a variation on truth and reconciliation, but noticing that it's not devoid, that actually there is history on this land. And there are people who have done good things. And what does it look like for us to rededicate, to re-envision and rededicate ourselves to some of our values? And anyway, I just, I like, I like chewing on and thinking about this framing that you're offering um, and the different assets and there, that there may have been substantial mismanagement um, but if we start to engage, and I'm, I recognize I'm saying some very bold things, but I still am, am enjoying it. You know, if we start to really engage around honoring indigenous sovereignty and start noticing like, huh, <laughs> separate from what we've invested in, in terms of our economy and government, in terms of like the overall planet and our collective well-being and us living on a planet with finite resources, hmm, the, indigenous, the original inhabitants of this land have some pretty good thoughts. <laughs> about how to make this all work. And they're not even saying, and nearly all of them aren't even saying like, we need to completely burn down everything that's here. Just talking about being like shifting the nature of our relationships in different ways. And so that it can work well for all of us. And so that there can be less collective suffering. So you can feel free to join in on that, Tracy, and respond to that at all. Or if you want to go back to where you were, I'm happy for that to have been a interlude a little bit of an aside yeah actually what what came up for me as you were talking in thinking about america about the u.s and like rededicating rededicating ourselves to our values i was thinking about langston hughes's poem let america be america um where it wasn't it it wasn't sort of a 
so Langston Hughes, um, as a black poet, was sort of saying like, this is what America says it is, and it's never been that for me. Um, and I think that, and it, and it's not just he. He talks about the way that um, that the American values have not been sh- shared with a lot of different folks, not just black folks, but um, but all kinds of uh, different racial and ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds of folks who just weren't able to access the so-called American dream or, or even some of the values that we claim to espouse. And that, so that's where I was, what I was thinking about um, as you were talking about applying the, this idea of rededication to the U S I um, last year, a little bit more than a year ago, um, you and I both, I think, sort of based on Gretchen Rubin, though we found her through Zamir and Carrie Bentley, did like the sort of like our personal commandments or rules for living, um, which I actually am like speaking of rededicating. I'm I ha- I pulled them down off the wall and I'm and like thinking, are these is this still right? Am I going to rededicate myself to these ten or do I need to like revise a little bit and that's that's sort of what I'm thinking of. like we don't do that <laughs> like as a society right we sort of say these are our values but we never actually do that account check in on them right with either side of the ledger which is because god forbid if we did <laughs> yeah it's an interesting um I may I share another think, idea with you oh go ahead go ahead sorry finish that thought well, I just I just was say, saying it's, it's sort of an interesting practice uh as an individual and I know some you know sometimes the organizations do it often they don't and then like the, the bigger we go the less likely it is that folks are doing it so it's interesting that you brought that up because yeah thank you so let's see if I can remember both things I'm wanting to speak to I want to bring it back to the individual level with what you were what we were just talking about with the aside that I took us down and also to your point about the practice that we learned from Carrie and Demir I've been thinking about it and feeling not pleased about it. And I want to go back and look at, yeah. But now as I'm hearing you, I'm like, oh, maybe I should revisit it. And I think maybe I would just potentially really heavily revise it in light of all that I've learned this year and the journey and the massive spiritual and professional transformation I've been on around. So you saying that is inspiring me. (laughs) to rededicate myself or to, to, to try on rededicating myself to the practice. Cause I took it very seriously when I first did it. And I also noticed like my things were, it was so heavy when I yeah. did it before. And right. And, and like, it was like some of them combined like two or three into one. Yeah. I remember my recollection of yours was it was like paragraphs, whereas mine were like two or three words for each. Command yeah. And that. right. And right now, like the thing that keeps coming up for me for an intention for 2023, um, uh, I didn't have an intention for this Jewish. Maybe I did a little bit. I'll have to look back at my notes and think about it. But it was more like I feel I felt like I've been in active conversation with the divine and myself and that it just like I'm in process around, like I don't, I didn't need to add an additional layer. Like I'm so deep in, in navigating the intentions, but now I'm having gotten to the other side of this live workshop that wasn't just a live workshop. One, it was just a huge undertaking, but it also was us stepping into my shifted, broadened vision for what's possible for our, it was just really, you know, so I, I feel like it's even bigger than it might seem on the surface. It was just a huge step forward and a risk essentially that went really well. Mm -hmm. Um, But like practicing deep belief. And so anyway, after all of this in this past year, the thing that keeps coming up for me is equanimity. It's like a desire for lightness and clarity and embodying, like essentially embodying what I want joyous justice to represent, which is having access to joy, but also just flowing with things and being anchored in my most agile, mindful power. I'm interested to revisit that because I'm, I'll be curious if I'll get attached again to what I wrote or I'm just really craving lightness. And in light of all the things I've learned and when I first created this, I've since developed 
like come to re, like finished my learning journey. Like I will continue to learn and evolve, but in terms of learning core anchor practices and embodying them and all of that stuff. And the result of that was like, I need code. I need shorthand to convey all of this nuance and power that I've collected and distilled and refined. And we birthed the Shema process, which essentially to me hits a number of the key points that helps people build out a similar joyous justice pathway that's their own, that maybe they would call something else, but that has the core tenets to me that I think that takes the best different pieces and facets from different parts of the world and different parts of my ancestral knowing. So a lot of transformation has happened. So now that I'm hearing you talk about this, basically, thank you, because you're encouraging me to actually give rededication to that practice a shot and and noticing that actually, because I was feeling really weighed down by what it was before, and it actually might be really cool to redo it and and actually really shift it um, and have it be much more essential and simple. So that's exciting. So the other thing, I think there might've been two more things I wanted to name. One of them was that to bring us back to your original premise, I think also too, in terms of rededication, there was something you were saying, I can't quite remember what it was, but it also made me think about just the very fractal nature of this idea of the value of rededication and how we talked about the personal and we talked about the macro. And then I think a next layer out that could be helpful pragmatically for people that also ties into some of what we teach and go into in grounded and growing and that we started to cover um, that we introduced in our live workshop. And um, these concepts are so rich that more than filled over (laughs) that more than filled the time is just taking it a layer or two out. So as we are rededicating ourselves to what matters most to us and thinking about that and the stories that make us who we are or the stories that have made us who we are and other stories that we could choose to identify, either create and or identify that are right within reach with us, Um, family members who had healthier habits or friends or people around us, what are sources of inspiration that um, in that rededication, it might be helpful to just take it out a rung and not only make it about what we are doing, but notice that we are a part of an interconnected whole. And that while it is important for us to take compassionate, radical self-responsibility, that we are influenced by different variables. And that as we are doing the process of what the, however that might look for us, of a rededication to what matters most to us and looking over a balanced ledger of of liabilities and assets that we notice that there are certain influences that have, that we're not so often when people do that ledger, but I just, I think, I think we can find a holy middle or a sacred middle between blame and completely taking all on all the onus on our own and noticing that ultimately we can not necessarily overnight, but we can make choices that can, get us where we want to go. And some of those choices might be reaching for community, reaching for support, but that also too, that we are not an island and that it can be helpful in our rededication to notice that there are other variables, whether it's systemic oppression or old hurts or other people's pain that are impacting us. And that as we engage in the rededication to account for those things, not from a place of disempowerment, from, from, but from a place of, awareness and mindfulness and actually empowerment around, I'm going to start to notice that this is having an influence in my life. And whether or not I know what to do with it, I'm noticing in the process of rededication that this is a variable that it's important for me to notice and perhaps get some support around and see if this time around, if, and that could be anything from a family member or a person or a colleague who has a certain kind of impact on us, or if it's around our health and well-being to notice, like, it's not just about rededicating me and my intention, but how does that rededication show up in my kitchen or in the place, the, the where I choose to place myself to best support myself? How's that landing with you, Tracy? It seems like you have thoughts. I was just thinking a lot about environment and how mm-hmm. much that affects our 
uh, our success or um, distraction from our intentions. The environment plays a, a major role, both positively and negatively. Yeah. And I think what I'm saying is like, do you mind if I riff off of that? That in the metaphor of rededicating the temple, the temple is a building with four walls and people come into it, but it's not like riding on the subway. It doesn't have a mother. It doesn't have children. It doesn't, it's not like when we think about rededicating ourselves and using this metaphor, it's really beautiful, but it's also helpful to notice that unlike the temple, we are mostly not stagnant, still beings. We are organisms who are interacting with other patterns and dynamics in the world so it's not as easy it's not it's it both i think is a really beautiful metaphor and it can be helpful for us to remember that it totally is doable and it took a whole community or a whole group of people to rededicate the temple and that in a different sort of way it will likely take a group of people and or a community to of backing and support for us to be successful in rededicating ourselves to whatever is important to us i think that's what i'm trying to say I like that yeah so did you have other thoughts because I potentially cut you off no you didn't I'm okay good. good thank you thank you for raising this theme this was interesting I liked using our minds in this way and I hope during this season that is cold for many not for me but it's cooler yeah, so it's that's really nice cold in Baltimore right now it's really cold yeah and like loads of snow like some people anyway like it's just it's so a cold winter season. So during this season, you know, wishing you um, sweet moments of enjoying the light that we choose to bring into the darkness and noticing the power of that and noticing the potential during this winter period. Um, that's another insight I think I might want to add about to the rededication of to take time during the slow period for us to rededicate ourselves and ooh, that's another potential twist that i'm just going to toss in in this last in these last few moments or what might be last few moments maybe we'll get longer is that as you're rededicating feel free to embrace the slowness of this season and i wonder if part of the challenge that people experience at times with resolutions is that they try to do it with summer speed as opposed to thinking about what Tracy's saying around rededicating and actually getting our minds and our spirits and our, our energy, like our embodied experience, like moving it through different parts of our being and noticing where am I in alignment with this and where am I not? And what do I need to rededicate myself? What do I need? Not how do I need to change myself? What supports and resources do I need? Yeah. To do There's that. There's no on-ramp. There's no on-ramp for a resolution, right? It's like the day switches and you're supposed to be different. Yeah. Um, and we need and on-ramps. Ramps. <laughs> and I think I, that's, yeah, rededication doesn't it potentially have an on-ramp. It kind I of is like to me. More room. And more to room me, it feels like it, it could be the on-ramp itself. Is that the mm -hmm. process of rededicating helps to get you into alignment. It helps to get you into a place where you even have a chance to start to walk in that. I love this, Tracy. The more I think about this, the more I'm into this. I've been like, I've been like, here's how I might apply it is that for over a year now I've gotten, and I was, my body was not in alignment in terms of health. I was experiencing a number of different challenges and things, but I've, I'm in a much better place health wise. And I have been for almost a year and so I finally got back to a place where I felt really ready and like my body could handle me doing strength training and I still haven't been doing it. And, and I want to, in the next year or two, do different things that might be quite physically demanding on my body. So besides just the general desire for strength training, I think it's like really pragmatic for me right now. Also, it came through in like a journaling channeling exercise where they were like, for everything that's coming, it's important that you be in optimal physical shape. Um, so it's, I love this idea. How can I think I love this idea? I really, because to, to me, this is the pause, right? It's not like the rededication, like that's what it is. That Oh, that's the cool takeaway. I love that we ended with a bang. 
make sure you mention this in the preview, right? Is like, it's, it's that it's not like after this battle and all this tough stuff, they weren't like, okay, back to prayer. They engaged in ritual, a rich, a transition ritual that helped honor the damage, the distance and the damage and to get back intimate and proximate to and, and reorient and figure out what is my relationship to this now in this season of my life. I love this. And so I've been thinking about different ways that could get me over the hump from not doing strength training to doing strength training. And I bought a course that looks pretty great, but I think also think that's not it in and of itself, but I love this idea of thinking about rededication and what I need. You know what's really interesting in both in both the fitness and the strength training and back in our you know in the in the temple being rededicated is that yeah. um, the rededication happens without a promise that there will be uninterrupted you know that res- whatever that thing is will be uninterrupted like we didn't have enough oil <laughs> right they rededicated anyway they didn't wait until they got more oil they didn't wait the eight days for more oil to be pressed. They lit it now. They lit the they lit the lamp Ooh. now. They took they took action now with what they had, and then with intention, low with vision, behold, like, visionary action. Right, like they couldn't take that much action, but they're like, "This is the one little thing I can do." Right, without knowing how they were going to keep the lamp lit for the next eight days while they were right. pressing more oil. And I think that's actually a really important piece of this rededication lesson is that you don't have to have it all figured out in order to light nope in order to light the that eternal flame um and just because you don't know how you're going to keep the flame lit doesn't mean it won't stay lit i think those and that's that's, part of the purpose and the value yeah and that's part of the value of the rededication right because dedication Mm -hmm. doesn't say doesn't mean nothing about dedication says that everything's going to be fine like there's an inherent grit and determination and sort of like emuna or faith that is a part of dedication of I'm going to do my part. Like when I think of dedication, I think of like steady and consistent. Um, and so as we think about what we need in order to be in relationship with that, I just, I love that because that often is the piece that is most important. It's not, it, you know, it's, it's the subtle alignment or lack thereof within us that can make all the difference regardless of circumstances around whether we're going to get to a finish line or make progress or not. So here's to us engaging in, uh, however it makes sense to us, some sort of rededication around anything or something that feels important to us that helps us feel nourished and happy to be alive. If this makes sense for you, right. Um, Or in the spirit of what I said earlier, it might just be noticing that we are humans. As we talked about on the live workshop, we are fancy animals. And this, for many people, is a season of rest. So how can we keep certain obligations and just invite in more slowness instead of fighting the snow and all the things that would otherwise have us in the cold, actually just moving in a way that matches the season and rededicating ourselves to being in deeper relationship with what is and not necessarily approving of it, but being in acceptance and seeing what inspiration can come when we aren't in direct opposition to what is. Here's to rededication, Tracy. Thanks for tuning in. To learn more about Joyous Justice LLC, our team, and how you can get involved with our community, check out the info in our show notes or find us at joyousjustice.com. If you enjoyed this episode, show us some love. Subscribe wherever you're listening. Tell your people, share what you're learning and how your leadership is evolving. Stay humble. But not too humble. And keep going. Because the future is ours to co-create.